yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am pleased to show you how you can make yourself an octagonal jacket. Yes, absolutely love how this came out and it is so easy you can make one no problem. Now for this particular piece I used Pound of Love. I did need to go into a second skein and for the tutorial, we're going to be using Lion Brand's Mandala. This video is not sponsored, but I always like to let you know what it is that I use if you want to duplicate the results. So now, of course, the obligatory twirl. It's fun, it's swishy, it's flowy, it's got some awesome drape to it. And the beauty of it is you can make it whatever size you want without too much muss and fuss. And without further ado, let's get into the piece that I finished for this tutorial. Ooh, I'm so excited. Ta-da! Okay, so this, like I said, I was shooting this out of sequence. So this is the piece that I was working on in this tutorial, finished to completion. I did need to use it was about four skeins of mandala to finish this piece. Yes, it's a little bit eclectic, it's a little bit boho, it's a little bit funky, it's a little bit punky Brewster even. <laughs> I know I'm dating myself here, but it's a lot of fun. And if you want something that's not quite so matchy-matchy, this is right up your alley. So yes, now we have to do the twirl. love how it came out regardless of the fact that it's not symmetric. Usually that is one of my big things. I want things to look just so, but I love it. It's so festive. It's fun. It's flowy. It's funky. And if you want to go with something more conservative, go with a solid color or march to the beat of your own bongo and go with a colorway. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Hello again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how you can crochet the octagonal jacket. Yes, it's very, very simple. The basis is actually one really big octagon with sleeves. It's very simple. It's a one round repeat and you can make it as big or as small as you want to. Now, for the piece that I had shown, I used Pound of Love, and I didn't even use two full skeins. Now, for today's project, I was thinking about using Lion Brand's Mandala in the colorway of Groot. I love Groot, yes. And uh, the color's really quite pretty, and I thought it would, you know, create an interesting sort of, you know, uh, target starburst sort of mandala looking effect. Yes. So I'm going to be using this. I have four skeins, so hopefully that'll be enough. Each skein is 590 yards. It is 100% acrylic and it is a weight of three. So that being said, I'm going to be using a size H five point millimeter hook. You can of course use whatever yarn, whatever hook size you want to. Um, I would, however, suggest a lighter weight of yarn. The heavier the yarn is, the heavier your project is going to be. That's sort of, you know, an unavoidable issue. So I would definitely suggest using a lighter weight of yarn so that your project is not terribly heavy. That being said, let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to start off with, of course, our slip knot. Boop. Okay. And then going to chain up one, two, three, four, and five. Could do even six, but I think I'll do, I think five should be enough. And then going to do a slip knot into the first chain to create a ring, like so. All right, now we're going to need a total of 16 double crochets in the center ring. Now I'm going to use the trick where you chain up two to get the height, but not actually count that as my first double crochet. So from here, I'm going to do 16 double crochets into the center ring. 
So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay. So let me just double count. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and sixteen. Perfect. Okay. So then to finish up the first round, going to slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet like so. And then of course you can cinch up the middle, tighten that up, sew in your ends, no problem. So that is round one. Alrighty, so for round two, I'm going to start by chaining up one, two, three, and four. Now that's going to act as a double crochet and a chain one space. Normally we would want a chain two space, but this tends to work out better, trust me. So chaining up four and then double crochet into that same first double crochet that we slip stitched into, double crochet into there. So we have a double crochet, chain space, and another double crochet. Next stitch, just a regular double crochet. Okay, and then into the next stitch, double crochet, chain two, and double crochet. Okay, and we're going to do this all the way around. So next stitch, double crochet, following stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet into that same stitch. Okay, double crochet into the next, and then into the following one, double, chain two, double. So double, chain two, and double, double into the next, and then into the next one, double, chain two, and double, double into the next one, and then double, chain two, and double, double into the next, and then double, chain two, double, and we're almost there. Double into the next, to the next one, double, chain two, and double, double into the next, and then last but not least, slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom of that first double crochet that we made, and slip stitch into the chain space. So we should have at this point a total of eight of these eyelets. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. 
All right, now this is going to create the basis for our octagon. And every one of these sides is going to increase with every subsequent round. And so I'm going to show you another round or two, uh, just so that you get the feel of what it is that we're doing. And then, well, and then it's a matter of making it big enough so that we can make our armholes. So let's continue on with this for now. Alrighty. Okay, so for the next round, round three, I'm going to start by chaining up four. One, two, three, four. And into the same space, double crochet. Like so. And then three double crochets, one in each. and then into the chain two space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then three double crochets, and then into the chain space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then just double crochet into each double, and then into the space, double, chain two, and double. We're just going to do this all the way around. It's as easy as that. Now, as far as this as a project, it's not so much of a pattern. It's more of a formula of how you can do this. Because, as I said before, you can make this whatever size you want. Whether you're big or small, short or tall, you can make it. Now, granted, I am not exactly the biggest, you know, biggest person in the world um, as far as height or whatever else. So um, that being said, I didn't need a lot of yarn. However, if you really want the front of your piece to really wrap around you, um, you are going to need more yarn and you're going to need to do more rounds in the end. However, keep in mind that the more you are going to be able to wrap it and close it in front, it's also going to be longer down the back uh, as well. So something to keep in mind. Because for every one direction, it grows in every direction. But I think that's kind of cool because it creates a really neat drapey, flowy garment. Okay, so yeah, I've just been doing my doubles in the doubles and into the spaces, doing a double, chain two, and a double. It's really, really that easy. And then we're almost to the end here. And then one more. There we go. And then last but not least, slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. And then slip stitch into the chain space. Now the reason why I don't do uh, a total of five chains, which would be a double crochet and then a chain two space, is because it just sort of works out that way as far as the way that the, the stitches um, space themselves. So doing a chain four initially really seems to work out better, I find. So, you know what, let's do another round together. Okay. 
Alrighty, so let's start in on another round. Gonna chain up four. And then double into the same space. And then for this round, going to do a double into each of these five. So it just keeps increasing one on each side as we go. Now I took a look at my previous example and I needed to do about 14 rounds. Now keep in mind, it's a slightly thicker yarn, slightly bigger hook, so I might need to do more rounds for this version, but that's the beauty of doing a formula as opposed to a pattern. You can make up your own rules, but this is my way of showing you how you can use a little bit of creativity and a little bit of thinking outside of the box, and you too can make something fabulous. Okay, so again, when you reach the chain two spaces, you do a double, chain two, double into the space, and just double into each stitch. Now, going to get to a certain point in which it will be in fact big enough. Basically, what it amounts to is, let me just stop right here. What this basically amounts to is you're going to have two sides at the top and this point here will be folded backwards ultimately, okay? In the end, this will create sort of like your, your collar, you know, wrapping around your back. So then that means that this side and this side will be where your armholes go, okay? So that being said, um, what, what it really amounts to is that this distance here has to be wide enough to create an armhole. Okay, and the distance from here to here needs to go across the width of your back. So really you can make it your own quite, you know, easily and quite frankly, you just need a few simple measurements, not a big deal. But I'm gonna have to do most of this work off camera and when I get up to that point in which I'm ready, I will then be able to show you just how to make the armholes, which actually is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And then picking up the stitches and then continuing on, making the sleeves very, 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 very simple. No counting involved whatsoever. And then just a little bit of front and back post double crochet ribbing to sort of finish it up. It's a very, very simple project. All right. So I'm almost done with this round. And then I'm going to proceed working off camera. until I get to the apertures for the arms so that we can make sleeves. Also, I think that this would be a great project for stash busting, provided of course that the yarn that you use is the same weight. Otherwise you may run into issues also, it would be preferable if the yarn is all the same material. If you're using acrylic, use all acrylic. If you're using wool, use all wool. Otherwise, yes, you may run into a bit of an issue. All right, so I'm in this space, double, chain two, and double. 
and then do these doubles. I also think that using an ombre for this would be lovely. Get some great color change in there. Okay, so we have reached the beginning again. Slip stitch into the top third chain. And there you go. So we have ourselves an octagon. Yes, it's very simple. And yes, it does actually lay flat, unlike so many other attempts at octagons that I have tried. Yes, this does actually lay flat. It's a fabulous thing. All right, so I'm going to keep going off camera. And when this is big enough where I can make the armholes, which so basically, again, to remind you, this space to this space, this needs to be big enough if you're going to create a, a loop from here to here of equal stitch length, it will be big enough for your arm to get through comfortably. You need some wiggle room, especially if you're going to wear something uh, underneath this as well, which I imagine you will. Um, so that being said, I shall return. Okay. Hello again. Alrighty. So as you can see, I've been stitching along and I am at the point where I can add my sleeve holes. Okay. So as far as sizing goes, okay. Now for me personally, from one flat side to the other flat side, for me is approximately 19 inches from one of the corner points to one of the opposite corner points. It's about 20 inches roughly. Okay. Now, because this is more of a formula than a pattern, there is a little bit of trial and error involved. It's not that bad though, because it's just double crochets. It's not, you know, like doing some complex pattern. All right. So when you feel that you are approximately where you need to be, um, by the way, this is for me round number 15. Okay. This is again, based on my gauge, the yarn that I'm using, the hook size that I'm using. Um, so this is for me round 15. Now I started, let me just turn this around here, get myself situated. Okay. I started the round as per usual, and then I did one full side and then I did a second full side. Now on the third side, because just to sort of backtrack, this point here is going to be at the bottom of the jacket. Okay. So you do one side, do another side, and then the third side is going to be where the sleeve opening is going to be. All right. Let me get my hook. Here we go. Okie dokie pokey and get myself together. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is to count the number of stitches. Okay, now I already did my double crochet, chain two, double crochet into that chain two space. So in order to figure out how long your chain is going to be for doing the armhole, all you have to do is count the number of double crochets, uh, including this end one right here. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, and 27. So that means that we need a total of 27 chains. Not bad, right? Okay. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to chain up 27 chains. Not too tight, not too loose. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
26, 27. Okay, then without twisting your chain, scoot over to the end of this side to the chain two space and into that chain two space, double crochet. chain two and double crochet. And that, my dears, is your sleeve opening. Now, yeah, it looks pretty big here, but uh, believe it or not, it works. At least for me and my personal size, it does work. Now, what we're going to do is from here, do the next two sides, this side and this side normally because this is going to be the top, where this top point, like I said previously, is going to eventually flap down to create your collar. So the next two sides, this one and this one, are going to be done normally. And then the third side is going to be another uh, sleeve opening, okay? So that being said, I'm going to continue on my merry little way doing the next two sides normally, and then the third side with the opening. Alrighty. Okay, my dears. So what I did was I, as you saw me do in the last part where I had the one armhole, I did two rows, uh, well, two sides, and then my other armhole. Then I just finished up the round as normal, started the next round, okay? And then I got up to the point of the sleeve opening. And as far as doing the rest of this, it's really not that bad. It's not my favorite, <laughs> it's not my favorite uh, bit of stitching because I don't like going into chains like this, but it is necessary. And this is a great way of avoiding having to make the sleeves um, and, you know, sewing them on later, etc., etc. There are no seams, which is a fabulous thing. So where I left off was into that chain two space. I did my double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Then going to do a double crochet into this double crochet. And then into every chain. Now, if you remember, for me, at any rate, it was 27 chains, so I have to be sure that I'm going to be doing 27 double crochets, one into each chain. Now, for me, I go into the chain underneath both loops. Now, yeah, it's a little bit fiddly, but it is worth it to do it right, I think. So just do a double crochet into each chain all the way across. And then I would suggest double counting to make sure that you do have the same number of double crochets as chains from when you created your openings. Just double check because it's a lot easier to go back and fix it now as opposed to much, much later. <laughs> um, and also, this is, of course, a good point to try on your project and see, does it fit properly, okay? Um, now, if it is snug underneath your arms, I would suggest, you know, ripping out, going back, and doing another... I didn't yarn over. There we go. You know, ripping out, going back, and perhaps doing another round or two so that when you do your sleeve openings that there is some wiggle room underneath your armpits. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to get this on and off, and of course, we don't want that. Now, if the opening is really wide, that's not a big deal because we will be tapering the sleeves somewhat. So no need to worry about that. 
And so, yeah, I'm just going to keep on keeping on doing what I am doing. I know this is real quality content here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, doing a double crochet into each chain all the way across, and then finishing this side after doing my 27 double crochets into the chains, double crochet into the double crochet, and then into the chain two space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then continue on in the normal fashion. And then when I reach this opening, do the exact same thing that I just did, finish up the round as normal. And then for every subsequent round for the entire project, pretty much, you're just going to be doing double crochets into your double crochets as normal. And so for the rest of the ball uh, of yarn that I have from the current skein, I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Um, and then once I get to a certain point um, in my project, I'm going to show you how you can add sleeves and then uh, also uh, how to add some uh, ribbing to the edge to finish it off, make it look real nice and lovely. And there you go. All right. So this is, this is the basis. I told you it was simple. So I'm going to be working on this off camera and I will meet back up with you. All righty. Thank you.